Hey cruisers, I'm Sherry with CruiseTipsTV.com and today we are going to be talking about some revised dining tips for you if you are going on a cruise. Main dining room etiquette, I guess you could say, has kind of changed over the last few years. So we're going to talk about some general tips that could apply to just about any cruise line of your choosing. Now the first tip that we have for you, regardless of the cruise line that you're sailing with, is if you're concerned about your dining arrangements, go check with the maitre d' on day one. Typically they have open office hours on that first day and you can go and say hello to them, check out what table you've been assigned, ask for a different table, and just kind of let them know what your preferences are. That's pretty general across the lines. Our second tip for you today is kind of a cool one. Now this is something that's changed over the last few years and that is that you can, on most cruise lines, check out the menus before you go to dinner. Whether your cruise line has a dining app like Princess Cruises where you can pull up the menus in advance or you just go to the dining room and look at that little dining uh, that menu that's hung up outside the wall, you can do that as well. Now, if you're one of those people who doesn't like those QR codes that have kind of come as a result of the pandemic, just ask for a paper menu. It's absolutely okay these days to say, hey, do you have a paper menu? That's my preference. I don't wanna bring my phone to dinner because sometimes it just kind of kills the mood, doesn't it? Our next tip is to communicate any food allergies you might have before your cruise. Most cruise lines have an email address that you can send in your preferences to. If you forget to do that, that's okay. Just go to that maitre d' on day one and let them know what those food allergies are. And don't hesitate to remind the staff of your food allergies throughout the cruise. So remind them on day one, then remind them again at every meal. That's okay. You have every right to make sure that you are safe on your cruise. Here's a tried and true dining tip that we just love, and that is order what you want. What do I mean by that? Well, maybe you sit down and you look at the menu and you think, huh, I really like three appetizers, but none of the entrees really look all of that appealing to me, and I kind of want two creme brulees for dessert. That's okay. When you're in the main dining room on a cruise, you can order whatever you want. Shrimp cocktail and a salad to start, no entree, fine. No appetizer, two entrees, and two desserts, you got it. You can absolutely do that. One other thing you might want to do when you're dealing with the dining room, the main dining room that is, when you place your order, if you have any special recommendations, like you want steak sauce, or maybe you want some horseradish, or something like that, or ketchup, ask for it when you place your meal order, not a little bit later on down the road because it's easier for your staff. They actually have to walk quite a distance to get to that kitchen. And so we want them to be able to bring that stuff to the table with your food and we don't wanna keep you waiting. Let's take a walk somewhere else for the rest of our tips. We're in Sabatini's Italian Trattoria here on Sapphire Princess. This is an awesome spot to come if you like food. Lots of food, they have amazing chef specials. Okay. Back to those tips that I promised. Our next tip for you is to ask your main dining room server for their recommendations. Oftentimes they have been listening to what the guests have enjoyed and loved over the past few weeks or months and they can make a recommendation for you about desserts, main dishes, and even appetizers. So that's one of our tips for you. Next up, try things you wouldn't normally try at home. Do you hate cooking seafood because it stinks up your house? I do love getting seafood on a cruise, even though I don't cook it as much as I'd like to at home. Being on a cruise is an opportunity to try things that are maybe a little bit more complex to make at home, or you just wouldn't think to dine on at home. Another thing that we love to do that some people don't even know is a possibility is to try your main dining room for lunch or breakfast. They're not just open for dinner. That's right. You can go have a very, very civilized meal in the main dining room, and it's such a wonderful feeling to have sit-down service and avoid the chaos of the buffet. Another thing we recommend that you do is if you have an issue, any kind of an issue with your server or with your food, mention it to your server, mention it to the maitre d', give them the opportunity to fix the problem. They deserve to know, and it's really just the right thing to do something we absolutely recommend that you do instead of filling out the comment card and dinging your server on it or writing a nasty review when you get home, try to give them the benefit of the doubt if you can. Another thing that we've started to do in the last few years, honestly, since the cruise restart, is we've noticed that sometimes in main dining rooms, 
that the service, the bar service can be a little bit slow. So you sit down and you're ready to order your dinner and maybe you place a cocktail order, but it takes them a little while and you're frustrated. You're thinking, oh, I just really want my cocktail right now. One thing that you can do is just head to a bar outside of the dining room before dinner and take a cocktail in with you and then maybe order a second one once you sit down. That's something that we really like to do. Our last tip for you is that it's good to know that night one in the main dining room on a cruise can be a little hectic. And why is that? Well, that's because a lot of people don't know where to go. They don't know what time to be there. They don't know which dining room to show up to. They don't know maybe how the app works to arrange their dining. Regardless of the cruise line, there can be some confusion on night one. So one possible workaround for you, and again, this is very much optional, is to consider not going to the main dining room, but instead booking specialty dining on the first night. We love doing steakhouses on the first night or teppanyaki or Italian restaurants like Sabatini's just to cut through some of that hecticness. We also find that the service is exceptionally good in specialty dining on those first nights and sometimes even the last night of the cruise. The last night of a cruise can be a great time to do specialty dining too because it kind of makes you feel a little bit less depressed about going home. So what did you think about these 10 main dining room tips? Are you a frequent cruiser and do you have any more tips to add? If you do, leave them down in the comments below so that everybody can read through them and get more and more tips because we think that main dining room kind of etiquette and processes are changing a little bit and I think it's a good time to kind of revisit this topic. Thank you all so much for joining us on board a Princess Cruise today. We hope this is super helpful and until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye.